Now, let's meet some of our athletes. Emily Defrond is a GB hockey athlete, and during Unlocked, she created her own Instagram live show called Cupper and Anatta. Guests have included many world-class sportswomen, as well as leading sports industry figures like Claire Balding and Sally Monday. And over the next 10 minutes, she'll be hosting a special edition of her show. So without further ado, please welcome Emily Defrond. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tame, and good evening, everyone. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to bring to you this a very special edition of my weird and wonderful Kappa and Anata with three of my fellow fantastic unlocked athletes. Firstly, Stacey Copeland, footballer turned professional boxer, the first British woman to win a Commonwealth title. Next up, Sasha Corbin. Saracens Mavericks and England netball superstar, also creator of the fantastic solo sessions. And then Sophie Carrigill, GB, wheel, GB wheelchair basketballer, world and European silver medalist. Ladies, thank you very much for joining me. And guys, we've got all the gear yes. with our plush new mugs. <laughs> so cheers to you. In, in true Copper and Atta style, we're kicking things off by finding out what everyone wants to know about yourselves. How do you all like your tea? So, Stacey, I, I want to start with you for obvious reasons. Let everyone know. I don't drink tea or coffee, so I have uh, Vimto, because I'm from Manchester, and so is Vimto. Manchester's the best place ever, so mine's Vimto. Sorry, Emily. Uh, <laughs> next. What about you, Sasha? Sophie? Oh, you, you ain't going to like this. Um, I love sugar. <laughs> And I do no. like milk, so it, it's very sweet. <laughs> Have we got a tea there, though? Have we got a tea, or is it not, to, not today? Not today. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, am I the only one repping the tea? <laughs> yeah. I'm a Yorkshire okay. girl, though, so it's got to be. I'm a proper builder's kind of tea. Okay, for obvious reasons, Sophie, thank you for saving the day just then. Um, okay, so keeping with Cup and Natter traditions, I pre-warned you that I'm going to ask you three questions, okay? So to kick things off, Stacey, now I see you as kind of like the captain of our Unlocked team. Yeah. Um, you've got a wealth of experience, knowledge, you're a true inspiration to us all. So question is, why did you want to be involved in the Unlocked programme at this moment in your life and your sporting career? Thanks. That's a really nice way of Emily saying I'm a bit of an old biddy now. But uh, that's all right. I'll take it. That. <laughs> uh, it was, to be honest, it was less to do with timing um, and more to do with knowing about the Women's Sports Trust. Um, so in, in terms of knowing the incredible people behind it, that's the trustees and the founders, but all of the people that partner with them and support it as well. Um, the work that they do and just being deeply passionate about the cause and the mission of the Women's Sports Trust Toast. So support them in any way um, is a great thing, but to be part of a campaign like this, I knew would be an immense privilege. And it turned out to be beyond, you know, even what I thought, I knew it'd be fantastic, but it, it was even uh, better and beyond because of all the people that are involved. So it's just been uh, incredible. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think that's something, yeah, I think that's something that I can resonate with in terms of, you know, the Women's Sports Trust is a fantastic, you know, a company and what they do and everything that they stand for. And I guess, Sophie, with you as well, like you've achieved so much on the basketball call. What made you want to maybe step out of the sporting world and get involved in the Unlock programme? Well, I mean, when I got the email, I was a bit blown away. Like, are they sure they've sent this to the right person? Um, just because like, and then meeting all you guys for the first time, I didn't come to the first event and it was on, so it was on Zoom and I was like scrolling through like, oh my God. It was just incredible. Like for me, it's so important to think about like what's next, your future career, like future aspirations. And I think this has just given us all like such an opportunity to think about that. Like sport is amazing and we all love it, but you, you do have to think, what can you do next? And it's definitely encouraged me to use my platform a lot more. And I'm so much more wise now about how to do that. And yeah, the education through this whole thing has been amazing. I've loved it. Mm. It's, it's quite interesting that you touched upon that you remember the moment where you got the email saying you're going to be involved because I remember very distinctly thinking exactly the same when I got 
sent through that athlete list of who was yeah. going to be involved. And Sasha, I'm not going to lie to you, girl. You were one of the names that I picked out. I was like, oh, my God, I'm a oh. big netball fan. Yeah. So for you as well, again, having achieved so much on netball, cool. what, what was your reasoning behind uh, getting involved? Yeah. Um, it's, it's weird. I, I remember getting the email as well and um, just being like, oh, my gosh, this is great. This is fantastic. But the, the key word for me was using our platforms to influence change and like for me that's huge because I feel like that's everything that I've always wanted to do in terms of like you know trying to empower young people and you know get into it make them feel that they can do whatever and I knew that this was kind of the place to mm -hmm. to be able to amplify that so I loved the fact that this this group was created and then just the fact that you know like connecting with other athletes mm -hmm. you you don't always get to do that sometimes if you're in the same facilities you're training together um, you might say hello to other athletes that are in different sports, but not all the time do you get that opportunity. And I felt like this was a fantastic opportunity to get to know other people um, in the sports, sporting world, doing exactly what we love doing um, and, and having the same kind of aspirations. Mm -hmm. So it's been fantastic. I couldn't agree. I mean, I don't think we could have written how much of a success that this has actually been. And like, getting to know all of you has honestly been a big highlight for me. Um, and one of my highlights is as well, listening to everyone's athlete stories during our hangouts. And mm -hmm. Sophie, I remember yours very vividly in that it really touched me. It was hugely inspiring um, mm -hmm. for you to share your, your athlete story so openly and honestly with us. Um, but also another highlight is the icebreakers in our hangout. And Sophie, for those that didn't know and didn't unfortunately join the hangout that day, Sophie actually left at um she led a icebreaker which was in the form of Zumba okay so it was it was really really enjoyable I must admit uh, so if you need any Zumba tips Sophie's your girl but Sophie throughout this program they're my highlights for you but Thanks. for you personally what, what would you say has been the best part of being involved in this program oh I mean so many obviously those like little things that you said then are like coming out of your shell is massively one of the things that I think being on this program has, has helped me do. Not that I needed help coming out of my shell, but I mean, in terms of like thinking about the future and, you know, almost like selling yourself and knowing your worth, like, like you said, Sasha, like influencing people, like for change, like that's what we all wanted to do. We were on that same mission. And, but I was sat there thinking like, how can I do that? How can I use my platform? Like, I didn't really know how to, use it at the time um, and I think I've really developed that over the past like couple of months and that's just through the webinars like through all the connections that we've got through this incredible program and like educating us every week on a bit of a different thing so for me like the webinars and and getting to know everyone else's activators as well like not just yours but I think actually being in lockdown has allowed us to do that a lot more than we ever would so that opportunity for me has been yeah priceless because I think it'll it'll just shape my future massively yeah I, I'd agree with you on that one I think I, I I say all the time that actually unlocked kept me sane during lockdown because it yeah. gave us something to focus on some positivity yeah. to share with one another and actually I couldn't agree more with you and and for you Sasha obviously netball is one of the sports where actually your time on the court at the moment is still unfortunately really limited so actually what was your highlight for for the unlock program obviously because you didn't have that netball um bit as part of your life during that time yeah I think just just literally getting together like every week, knowing that you could talk about the sport and where it can go and um, other people's sports, where, what they're currently going through. Um, just, it, it was just extremely empowering. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely the word I would use. And listening to everyone's stories and uh, just knowing that, you know, everyone's journey is like this. It's no mm -hmm. one, it's no place sailing. And that's really important for other athletes to know. And I felt like it was nice to know that um, from other people but another high, but a highlight for me to be honest is my activator so Charlie Boss oh. um, is like a commercial director in um, in, uh, in sport in ESPN and Disney and it's been so good like having him he's been so supportive of my journey um, especially within like with, with solo sessions and in terms of amplifying voices he's put me on stages where I would have to speak and have to dig deep into um understanding where I want sport to go and having a, being able to have an opinion and putting me in front of people, sporting leaders, sporting organisations. And that's something I 
probably would never really do. <laughs> mm. So, and, and Laura Weston has also been really um, key in that as well, helping me um, just kind of like gather my thoughts and being a sounding board with that. So it's been great in terms of having that support mm. when doing, stepping out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I think, um, you know, the activator has been a huge part of my journey as well throughout Unlocked. I was very lucky to be partnered with um, Jackie Oatley and she's done exactly the same uh, from the sounds of it. And speaking of dog activators, Stacey, yours weren't too bad either, was she? She's all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, I had Sue Campbell, um, Dame, Baroness, Hieress, Majesty, whatever word she has in front of her name at the minute. Can't keep up, she wins another thing every year. But uh, she's probably just Queen Queen Campbell by now or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, the, one of the highlights for me, obviously, was me and you, Emily, trying to do each other's accents on Capra and Anetta, um, <laughs> which oh, were you. like a northern I don't know what northern Ukrainian or something don't know what you were doing but it wasn't <laughs> man. but uh, that was an highlight but I think uh, in terms of stuff we've done together um, I interviewed Tasha Jonas when I did my lockdown lives um, and that was fantastic Emily's interviewed a lot of the unlocked athletes for hers which was brilliant and um, collaborating together we've done quite a bit in terms of articles and tv interviews particularly when the main headline was women's sport is just going to be dead in the water forever after covid and whatever like we just went right against that and got our voices heard and we're like no 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 and i felt like at one point it was all this wave of it and just the unlock people going no no that tide's not coming in like pushing the water back on our own but it worked and um, the workshops i think were fantastic um, our activators and our own group work as well the breakout sessions that we had was an amazing time to be with like-minded people because it I think as we've all seen it can be quite isolating it's you know whether you're male female whatever sport you're in it's like pushing a, a heavy load uphill again and again and again and I've referred to this group many times as a positive petrol tank that when you're fighting this fight all the time you know whether it's these things on twitter or actual you know blockades that you're up against in the sport your petrol tank does get low, even if you're mega positive. And it's really been important to have everybody here, you know, in, you know, Tammy, Claire, Laura, and all the athletes and everybody else involved and our activators filling up our tank again, because once that, that tank's full, you can go again. And I think Sophie's mentioned it and we've all mentioned, when we were all honest, we all said, when we got the letter, we were like, did they mean me or did they mean someone else? Everybody had that. And we've gone from that to, we're still humble, but we've gone to the point of, of course, I should be taking up this space. Yes, I do belong here. And yes, we've got bigger, better, amplified our, amplified our voices together through that support. And I actually think that's a superpower of women that if the, the stereotypes don't tell you. But in actual fact, when we come together and collaborate, fantastic things happen. And this has been an example of it. Yeah, I mean, superpower indeed. I, th I think that's a, a bit of an understatement, to be honest with you. But I think we could have literally talked about um, this for hours, to be honest with you. But I guess the million pound question now is what next? So for you, Sasha, I'm sure everyone knows that a few weeks ago you um, released your new solo session boot camp 1.0, which is very, very exciting. And I feel like the sky's the limit for that. But off the back of your involvement with the Unlock programme, what's next? What, what do you think the lasting impact is going to be from your involvement in this programme? Well, firstly, just with the connections, I don't think I'll ever lose. And, and I don't want to lose it. And um, just the support, even specifically to launching that product, like everyone pretty much help, like helped me get it out there for people to see. Um, that, that is just amazing. And I definitely don't want to lose um, the connection and how I can help others um, within the program as well. Um, but just not being afraid, like at all, not being afraid, like being confident, knowing that, you know, if I'm passionate about something, I want to get something out there or, you know, I'm really, I just want to get this message out, just do it. And um, I feel like I've definitely learned that from here and just being authentically like myself throughout that process. Right. Yeah. yeah, and what about yourself, Stacey? What's, what's next for you? I think obviously a, a large centre of my focus is on Pave the Way, which is a charity I've just founded. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing, so I'm just figuring out as I go along, but I'm deeply passionate and I know that's going to take me a long way. Um, but it's about making things better for both genders, for both men and women. It's basically challenging gender stereotypes that hold people back and 
those stereotypes no longer being a, a barrier to human potential because it just shouldn't be any longer. I think in terms of the legacy this is going to leave and continue, it, this momentum in women's sport is phenomenal and it is not going to stop. It, it's impossible for it to stop. It's only going to get better and better. And we look at, if we look at the journey of women in sport in and of itself, it is phenomenal what we've done. The sports we've been banned from, including mine, boxing. I wasn't even allowed to do it as a kid. And here I've been boxing for England and as a professional. And everyone's got a similar story that things weren't possible when we were kids that are now. That's incredible. So imagine where it's going to go. And this is a gigantic wave that we're all on. And we've all got, you know, some people are on a massive ship. They already know where they're going and it's being steered. Some people are on a dinghy. <laughs> not saying any names but severe of you on a dinghy but that's fine uh, and then the cool kids like uh, us we're on surfboards but everybody's on something different but we're all on the same wave and you know that's going to build and build and we know it ain't going to be one wave that's going to do it it's every single time that tide comes in it makes a difference and there's so many tides coming up and there's loads of other little boats behind us with the next generation so this is a phenomenal momentum of a wave that we're on and it's just going to go on and on and on so we're not even going to see the benefit of this for years to come because all of these people looking at now are going to be running everything and it's going to be incredible and things are going to change because it's not going to stay as it is when, when we've got anything to do with it i would agree i think the future is very bright and i've never heard such a good analogy than what you just used. Uh, Sophie, what about yourself? Final, final. Why do you make me follow up from that? That was the, I mean, Stacey said it all. Ending on a high, girl. Sophie, yeah. you're on a big ship. You're a cruise there liner. We <laughs> there we are. And it is, it has been a massive wave and it's just so positive. I think for me, it's just made me believe so much more in myself um, and have that confidence to go out there and, and know, like Stacey said, like we deserve to be there. We, we deserve to take up that space. Um, and I think that's just going to give us confidence and the people coming, you know, behind us, the young girls come in. For me, that's who I'm trying to inspire. If I can sort of put especially disabled women out there more, I think that's what's needed. Uh, women, you know, full stop. But for me, especially disabled women, being some sort of role model, I think that's the goal. And I think that's definitely what this programme's helped me yeah. believe in myself. I think it's like spot on and it's one of those where every athlete involved in the Unlock programme is going to have a completely different answer to that question but actually together I'm sure we're going to make waves um, moving forwards and and I know that we're pushed for time and I know that usually in Cup and Natter we do ask for social media questions to finish things off luckily for you guys I didn't get any in um, so don't take that personally but social media questions are out um, but it's my cue to now wrap up this incredible special edition of Cover and Natta, an unlocked edition, which has been so fun. We could have spoken all night, but um, I'm wary of the time. Um, but thank you very much, guys, for joining me. Thank you very much to the Women's Sports Trust for this fantastic platform, this fantastic programme on behalf of all the athletes. Thank you is just not enough. Um, but in the meantime, everyone else, keep that kettle boiled. Keep Natta and using hashtag Cover and Natta. And Laura, back over to you.